Tuberculosis was one of the deadliest diseases in human history that struck America with a vengeance in the late 1800s. Dr. Edward Livingston Trudeau, a TB sufferer himself, opened the country's first sanatorium to treat patients using the fresh air of the Adirondacks, all the while doing exhaustive research looking for the miracle cure that would elude scientists until the breakthrough discoveries of antibiotics a half century later. You can watch this episode of American Experience, The Forgotten Play, this Sunday at 12 noon here on Mountain Lake PBS. And one of the historians interviewed for the documentary is a writer from Saranac Lake, New York, who has written a new biography on Trudeau's life and work to unravel the mysteries of TB. Mary Hotelling, who was featured in that PBS documentary called The Forgotten Plague, has written a new biography on the life and work of Dr. Edward Livingston Trudeau, and she joins us now. Welcome. Nice to have you here. It's also my pleasure to welcome my colleague here at Mountain Lake PBS, Jack LeDuc, who is a longtime resident of Saranac Lake and lives in one of the former Cure Cottages. Yes. We appreciate you being here as well. Mary, you timed the release of this new book to go with the centennial of a Dr. Trudeau's death. It was, yes. It took a little longer, it ran a little long, but um, it, it, he died in 1915, and that was the, um, the centennial of his death. So we were hoping that the book would be finished in that by then, but it came out last summer in, in July. This has been a labor of love for you. You've been, oh, work, you've been working yeah. on this book for m many years. Yeah, well, for years I was the director at Historic Saranac Lake, and information came my way, and I didn't know what to do with it. I saved it, put it away. Um, and then uh, after I retired, I was, it was suggested, we, we tried, actually, we started to uh, public reprint Dr. Trudeau's autobiography, and that didn't meet uh, people's uh, approval for some reason, and it was suggested that we write a new biography, and so that's why I got started on it. I worked for three years on that, writing and rewriting, mostly. Um, Caroline Welsh from the Adirondack Museum uh, was my, formerly, was my um, ad advisor in this. She and I sort of collaborated on it. Dr. Trudeau's been dead many, many decades. Yeah. Oh, you just mentioned you had, you accumulated material. Is there anyone you could talk to, Mary? No, there's not a single soul who was yeah. still alive who, would, who, he, who knew him personally. How did you go <laughs> from there? Well, so yeah, well, my primary source was actually his autobiography, nevertheless, even though we weren't reprinting it as it was. Uh, there, I've, I've quoted from it heavily in this book. Uh, but then I had to find what other people had written about him in um, other, in, in a, there are many other sources for information about what, um, uh, for other people's impressions. I was always looking for other people's points of view, not just his own, trying to, you know, get a more rounded picture of this individual. For instance, he used Little Red as the first cure cottage. Well, it really wasn't the first cure cottage, but, but it made a great symbol. So he, maybe it was, I don't know why he picked, there were three that were built all about the same time. Maybe this was the better looking one. Maybe this one had the most interesting story about the first people who stayed in it. I thought that was an interesting yeah. point in yeah. your book, you brought that yeah. out. I had always thought Little Red was yeah. the first one until I yeah. uh, read that in your book. And it's still standing over at Trudeau Institute, yes. of course. They moved it as a, a you know icon, really, when they closed the sanatorium. Sure. In his autobiography, did he downplay any of his achievements or accomplishments or leave them out that that you, in, during your research, yeah. thought were important and included in your book? Well, he, he was honored a lot in his lifetime, so it, uh, and he would mention those things, but he didn't crow about them, you know. He was very modest in his personal accomplishments as far as medicine, because he wasn't, he, he was, of course, he was a trained doctor. He'd gone to medical school in New York City, and he'd had some, some experience um, in, in a hospital as a resident. But, um, he wasn't highly trained. He wasn't. Uh, he didn't come from Johns Hopkins and other people. You know, some of the people who came along after uh, were very had better credentials than he did. But he uh, he managed he managed on his own in a very interesting way. I thought, and it, I think he's a great model for people to, you know, t grab it and go with it. Anything, you know, get your idea and don't let it go. He was able to do that because he had a small personal uh, income you know, from his family and his wife's family, they had some money coming in. So when he, when he was younger, he had a little more of that. By the time he 
died, he didn't have so much. He, he had had to work. He had had to um, take care of patients at, at not at, oh, at the patients of the sanatorium he took care of for free. But he had um, private patients, uh, particularly at Paul Smith's hotel in the summertime. The summer, the summer work was pretty heavy. He was the doctor in residence out there, and he would go around on a, um, a, a guide boat. Somebody would hmm. dr row you, him around. Yeah. You mentioned in your book Robert Louis Stevenson yeah. was one of his patients. Yeah, yeah. Stevenson was was his probably most famous patient, um, and they got along really well. He really wasn't very uh, Stevenson wasn't particularly sick when he was there, but he and he and Trudeau were probably two of the best educated men in town at the time and probably had the most in common in their backgrounds. And so they were, you know, they became friends. He would come to the Adirondacks, regain his strength, uh, spend time in the Adirondacks, and then he would go back to New York City and, and deteriorate. He, yeah, he tried that. He tried going back a couple times and it, every time, it it, he, it, yeah, he, it didn't work. So he decided he had to stay and he brought his family up then. And, and the people at the hotel, which was really a hunter's hotel pretty much at the time, thought he was crazy to bring children up there. And the kids were cold, he said, but they didn't get sick in the wintertime. They were... They but he was convinced the clean air was, was the medicine. Well, several doctors were convinced of that, actually. What people always did up to that point was come for the summer and then go home. And so they were just at camp and or at the hotel, and they were there for... Uh, you know, three months maybe, but not maybe into the fall a little bit, but not not through the winter. And so, what really he did that was really different was to stay the winter. He stayed in first the first winter with Paul Smith's family in the hotel, and then the second winter he stayed in Saranac Lake. Many people are familiar with the with the story of how he came up here, he spent time in the Adirondack Wilderness. Yeah. Of course, opened the uh, the sanatorium, uh, the, f the the first in the in the country to treat TB patients. Was there anything you found in your research and that you put in your book that, that people maybe don't know and that would uh, would surprise them? Well, I tried to look at I tried to look at things that um, were might have been negative about him because everything I heard about Trudeau was positive, you know. And there were there were a couple of things where he was uh, where there was another point of view from another source. Um, one of them was that he, he, whether he was really the first or not in the United States to uh, replicate the works of Dr. Koch in Germany, whether he really did that or he didn't do that. And um, for, sometimes he said he did and sometimes he said he was the second. He spent so many years looking for a cure, okay. never found the cure, no. but as you said, he did provide for so many people the hope that yeah. that one would be coming even though it would yeah. be 30, 40 years yeah. before one would actually come. Well, and, and it wasn't that there wasn't any treatment at that point because he began to do, I mean, the fresh air was the main thing, you know, but fresh air and rest and good nutrition, uh, all, all of those things. Uh, freedom from um, the stress of ordinary life. So when people came up, they didn't have to worry about their work. Uh, the sanatorium was semi-charitable so that People had to pay a little bit, and in the early days it was five dollars a week. It went up to seven dollars a week and stayed there for a long time. And, all, and the rest of the um, of the cost per patient was raised by Dr. Trudeau from his wealthy friends. He uh, asked for money every well, year. You mentioned yeah. he was quite a salesman and a could great raise money. Fundraiser, and he continued to raise funds until he died. I mean, <laughs> he was he was pretty sick and out of commission for anything physical for about to the last 10 years of his life. But nevertheless, he was still raising money. Does it help to have a century uh, between when he wrote his autobiography and your book now to really put in context his achievements? Well, I, I don't know that I put his context and his achievements in context, but I think um, we, our last chapter is written by Andrea Cooper, Dr. Cooper from uh, Trudeau Institute and Dr. Ian Orm. Uh, now they, uh, he's in Colorado and she's in England now, but they collaborated on a uh, on a chapter about what would Dr. Trudeau think of you know, research now to try to put to put some context to it. Yes, I mean I th I figure I'm kind of the micro <laughs> person and they're the macro. You know they're able to. Um, I, I tried to talk about what uh, what I learned that he had done and. They talked about um, how how that might what that might mean in the larger world. A rare romance in medicine: the life and legacy of Dr. Edward Livingston Trudeau, is the book. 
Mary Hotelling, thank you very much for taking oh, the time to be so with much. us. Thanks so much. I enjoyed it very much.